Hey you guys, it's Tuesday night, 5.15. It's just about to storm here, pretty bad actually. So uh, if, if my signal cuts out or something that's beyond my control, I really hope that this is coming through clearly. I know the last couple of classes have been kind of boxy and pixelated into the beginning. So I'm actually debating going back to using my old way of doing lives, which means you won't receive a notification anymore, but you'll still be able to find it instantly when you get on the channel. Um, I hesitate to do that because a lot of people depend on the notifications um, to remember that we're going live. <laughs> um, but um, many of you who come every week, you're the same people. So. It might not be a big, that big of a deal. And if we can get a clearer picture, that makes it worth um, worth more to be doing cooking classes if people can see what I'm cooking. So anyway, I'm hoping this one's not pixelated. Um, we'll just have to see, I guess. <laughs> Tonight we're gonna be making a sourdough topped chicken pot pie. I've already diced everything ahead of time, so we're gonna get this rolling. I'm hoping to have this in the oven in like 20 minutes or so. We'll see about that. First step is to preheat the oven to 375 degrees. Okay, I'm gonna angle the camera down. Like I said, I hope this is not pixelated. Um, if it is, sorry. We're gonna try better next week, I guess, if it is this week. Okay, so I'm gonna use my Dutch oven. You wouldn't have to, I just love this pot. I use it almost every day. So we are going to actually grab an onion. I forgot about that onion. Hang on a second. If you hear the dog barking and people running around outside, it's because everyone's trying to brace for the storm. <laughs> it's kind of wild here right now. I just gotta find myself a cutting board. Here we go. So I've got a smaller onion. At least this is small by Azure standards. <laughs> Standard. So what I'm gonna do is this pot I'm gonna put over in heat. Now I'm gonna put about four tablespoons of butter in the bottom of the pot. See, that's lard. Where did my butter go? Oh, right here. Here we are. Four tablespoons of butter. Come on, buddy. Can we have a on the chickens? Um, if you guys can get the chickens to lock up, lock them up. Uh, they can. Okay, well then just leave them. They'll take cover somewhere. It'll Three be fine. Do the best stuff you can. Okay, that's alright. We'll deal with it after the storm passes. All right, so I'm just gonna mince up this onion. Don't forget to save your peelings for broth. I do have a video up here on the channel. It's one of my older ones on how to make broth. If you have the ability to let me know this is coming through clearly and it's not all pixelated or even to tell me my, my video looks like crud, comment down below live and let me know. And Kathy, I know you're watching, but you don't have a way to do that, so. <laughs> anyway, here we are. Medium heat, we got our onion going. All right, so in preparation for this meal, I've already, looks good. Oh, good, that's great. Some comments, hang on, I? Anthony Mann is back. Hey, Anthony Mann. All right, butter. Yes, butter is what I'm using. So tonight, I've already prepped all of my veggies. So you need um, about five and a half cups of vegetables of your choice. Um, and I've chosen these. You could put potatoes in this. You could swap things out if you're not you know, a carrot fan or something. But so inside this container, I have one and a half cups of chopped carrots two cups of green beans and two cups of peas, which will be the filling. I've also made broth ahead of time, which is not hard, you guys. This came out of the fridge, which is why it's gelatinous. That's signs of a good, healthy broth. 
And I've also already cooked up one pound of chicken. It's got some carrots in it because I accidentally put them in the wrong container. <laughs> So, um, what we need to do is while we're waiting for this to simmer, we're going to go ahead and mix. Hey, Jackie, we're going to go ahead and mix um, the topping up. Well, at least we're going to start mixing it up. We can't mix it all up because when you add the baking powder to it, it pretty much explodes. And I want to make sure that I have a pan ready to go when that happens. So, but we're going to start on the topping. So this is kind of an altered recipe. It's not in my cookbook yet, <laughs> but my cookbook does have two other versions of this recipe that uses the sourdough starter for the top. This is gonna be an altered version of that. I used to just use the same recipe, but the problem I was having was that the, um, the sourdough topping was too thick on my pan. But tonight I'm gonna to be using a 13 by nine pan, so we should be just fine. Buddy, oh, yeah, come from outside. Okay, keep, keep picking up with daddy. We'll help daddy get the, the hatches battened down, okay? Why? Because there's a storm coming. Do you see how dark it is? Daddy already knows there's a storm coming. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna back you up. Hopefully, I'm not getting grainy. Try and not get grainy. All right, so we need three cups of sourdough starter. That's nice and bubbly. So I'm just gonna empty it into this measuring cup. I think this is about three cups anyway, but just for the sake of measuring, we'll measure it. Two cups. And this is going to be three. You're done milking? Good yeah. job. Thank you for milking my goat. Yeah, you're right. The wind shifted. Did it shift? I thought it was probably going to blow right over us. Unfortunately. The storm looked like it was heading kind of north of us, <laughs> northwest of us. But I said to the girls, if the, if the wind shifts, which it just did, it's going to blow right over us. Okay. So I have three cups of sourdough starter here, and then we need six eggs. I got fresh ones over here. They just came inside the house. <laughs> Bethany usually waits till dusk to collect the eggs, but I told her there's a big storm coming. She better just get out there and do it. So six eggs. Nice bright yolks. Look at that. Those are happy chickens. <laughs> All right. Two more eggs would make six. And this comes together pretty quickly once we get our filling all ready to go. And this is the topping. One teaspoon of salt. So I'm going to be using colored salt, so health, healthy salt, pink Himalayan salt, Celtic sea salt, something with color. And then we need six tablespoons of coconut oil, which I also didn't grab. Hang on one second. I was like literally running in here right before the live because I had to go through all the goat's hay and everything. <laughs> all right. Six tablespoons, which is about a third of a cup of coconut oil. This is the coconut oil I buy from Azure Standard. It's only like $16 a gallon. And I only use it for cooking. Okay. So with this recipe, we're going to stop after this because what ends up happening is the last ingredient is baking powder. But the second you add that to this, it just starts rising like crazy inside the bowl. And it kind of gets out of control. So <laughs> I'm gonna wait to add the baking uh, powder until last. And we got our onion cooking. Sometimes I do this with the mixer too. It's a little easier when you do it in the mixer.
Okay, so onion is officially sauteing, so we got like another couple minutes over there until we add the rest of the ingredients. I'm just using a fork if you had like a handheld blender or something. Mixer, that would be good. Or a freestanding mixer, which is like right behind you guys on the counter. <laughs> Probably would have been a good choice. All right, set that aside. I might just put it right into my mixer here in just a second. Okay. So to the pot now, the onion's been simmering. So to the pot, we're gonna add our homemade. We need three and a half cups. It's a half a cup measurement. There we go, three and a half cups of broth added to the batch there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add, um, we're gonna go ahead and add our vegetables. The chicken is already cooked in this scenario. So this, once again, is five and a half cups of vegetables of your choice. Whatever you like in your pot pie. Some people like to put potatoes. I'm not one of those people, but if you do, go ahead. So we're just gonna add this in. And we're gonna bring this up to a simmer. Simmer slash boil. We're over medium high heat at this point. <laughs> it really is something about how all of a sudden when the wind shifts and the coming you just <laughs> it's not a good thing uh my friend who lives about 20 minutes west of us already texted me and said it's like a tsunami downpour so no tornadoes it's too cold for those right now but um definitely still severe weather so i went ahead and just whip this on up okay and like i said we're gonna wait to add the baking powder to last because this will start to get bubbly and rise right into the bowl in the meantime, we are going to take lard, and we're going to lard up the 13 by 9 pan back here. If you are only cooking for a few people and not a large family, you sure could um, do this in like a pie pan, but just make sure you have all the ingredients, because otherwise you'll make two pie pans, which isn't a bad thing, this freezes well as well. But in my cookbook, the link, the link is down below, in that cookbook there is um, recipes for like a taco, sourdough, type scenario with the same thing where your ingredients in here are taco based and then you have your yummy sourdough crust and let's see what's the other one I forget there's a taco one and it's not chicken pot pie it's something else but anyway the possibilities are endless you could do pizza toppings and tomato sauce you know pizza sauce on the bottom and then add your your topping let me see what page it's on hang on We've got, I forget what it's called. There it is, taco sourdough skillet and the barbecue sourdough skillet. Both of those are really, really good. <laughs> you just need bubbly starter to start it. So super, super easy. That's on page 96 and 97. The cookbook, if you haven't grabbed it yet, the link's down below. I still have one left by some miracle. <laughs> Although I wouldn't hesitate to ship, ship it out to someone if somebody wanted it. All right, this is going to come to a boil, and then we're going to go to the next step. We're going to go ahead and add our seasonings while we're waiting. We've got half of a teaspoon of basil. If I had a teaspoon measurement, I would use it. We're just going to eyeball it. <laughs> Not very much basil. Half of a teaspoon of garlic powder. Or again, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Okay, half of a teaspoon of onion powder. Ooh, that's a little more than half a teaspoon. Oh well, it'll still taste good. <laughs> a 
then we need one teaspoon of salt. Okay. And give it a stir. So once this starts to come up to a boil, we're gonna go ahead and start slowly thickening it with some cornstarch, but you could use a different thickener. You could use sprouted flour. You could use um, arrowroot. Any of those alternative cassava flour would work. Any sort of alternative thickener, um, you sure could use it. All right, so then we need, I was gonna go, I need some milk, I'm gonna get some milk. Maybe. <laughs> Look at that, we need one cup of milk and there's exactly one cup left in this jar from yesterday morning's milking. That's pretty crazy. But good. All right, the second here, it's getting ready to come to a boil here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of pepper. You don't have to do this. My kids aren't huge pepper fans. That's why I don't commonly use pepper in my videos. Um, so I use it very, very sparingly <laughs> because one of them will get a chunk of pepper and then complain that their mouth's on fire. So, But once again, I think that relates back to me eating really spicy food when they were in my womb and they couldn't get away from it. So now they just choose not to eat that way. I'm going to go ahead and I pick the carrots out of here. This is my one pound of cooked um, and cubed up chicken. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the bottom of our 13 by nine pan. Make sure I get all the carrots out. Cause they're gonna kind of boil in here for just a few minutes. The carrots are the crunchiest item in this mixture because my green beans were frozen. They were garden, you know, beans out of the garden. And the peas don't cook very long before they're nice and soft, so it's just the carrots. So we're bringing this to a boil, and we're going to let it boil for a few minutes. And then we're going to thicken it. But we got to make sure we got all the carrots in, is my point, because we want it to cook them about halfway. It is so dark outside, it's not even funny. <laughs> so, a little announcement. Next week's cooking class, there will be no cooking class. I am supposed to be at a farmer's market running a Weston A. Price booth. So if that happens, um, well, we'll just say there's not going to be any class. So this week they were supposed to have the um, booth, but now with this incoming storm, they cancel it. So it's been moved to next week. So next week there will be no cooking class. Just a little note. I think my Azure order also comes next week, so it's kind of a crazy time anyway. So you guys will be getting a video from Azure Standard Hall, and then also I have another video that I'm just finished editing. It was how to make homemade uh, canned uh, Heinz chili. And it goes through the directions on how to can it and everything, so that'll be coming out as well to kind of hold you guys over till our next class. I'm just hoping the reception's staying good as the storm is getting blown right over us. We'll have to see. Okay, so we're coming up to a boil here. And I'm just gonna start the thickening process. I don't wanna thicken it all the way because we've gotta have some liquid in here to boil. So, the eventual amount is two thirds of a cup of cornstarch. I'm looking for a clean third cup measurement. Hang on. I might have to wash the one I just had. Nope, here's one. Okay. Dishwasher to the rescue, right? <laughs> Alright, third a cup measurement. So we're just going to do a third of a cup. I'm gonna have my whisk ready. Like I said, I'm going to be using cornstarch, but you can try these amounts with other flour. What thickener you're using will depend on um, how much you will need in the end. But for cornstarch, it's two-thirds of a cup. 
And I'm just adding a little bit at a time because you don't want to add too much and then have it clump on up. Nobody likes clumpy stuff. Floating around in their gravy. One of the reasons why I like these skillet meals with the sourdough is because all you have to do is have a bubbly starter. You don't have to remember to feed the starter before you go to work um, or the night before or any of that. You just have to have one that's been fed and it's inside your fridge equals three cups. Okay, I'm just gonna keep on whisking to get any little chunks. Okay. We're gonna let that keep on boiling. I reduced the heat back down to medium. I just wanted it to come to a boil rather quickly. So that should just keep on going there. We got half of the thickener in. So just another shout out. I know I mentioned this in the last two videos, but I totally escaped the nasty cold that is going around. It went through my house and attacked everybody. Um, and I avoided it with this tea. So I mentioned it in the last two videos. If you missed that part of the video, please go buy this stuff. It's so worth it. This is the stuff that saves some of us <laughs> every year. Um, it's called Urban CT and it's by bulkherbstore.com. Um, I am not an affiliate, okay? So I don't make any money telling you to go buy this. But there's something about this tea that, and I'm not a tea person. I, I actually hate tea. But if... This tea is the only thing stopping me from getting a horrible illness that my whole family has. I'm drinking the tea. Um, I would just recommend you just go ahead and order a half of a pound. I wish it came in a pound bag because we have a big family. Um, I would almost need like a whole pound if I was going to do the whole family on this. But for one person who's on it, half a pound is plenty. Um, but I just drink about four cups of this a day. Just sip on it all the time. Um, along with taking rose hips that I've encapsulated works pretty darn well um, they also have another tea on their website called um, double e immune booster um, and that is a really good tea as well to fight off things like the vomiting flu Ugh. Um, it works really really well with that all right i'm going to set a timer so i don't forget about two minutes we're going to stop boiling this and we're going to add the rest of the thickener and then move it into our pot. So with that double immune boosting tea, you can actually turn it into a tincture. And if you don't know how to do that, it's actually not as intimidating as it sounds. My very, very first video on this channel teaches you exactly how to make your own medicinal tincture. It's basically just mixing the stuff they ship you in a glass container with either your choice of vodka or food grade glycerin and letting it sit. Um, so that video is up here on the channel. If you do not know what I'm talking about, please go watch that. The cold and flu season is upon us, and it's time to start making tinctures and making sure that your herbal cabinet is stocked if you haven't stocked it yet. I just stocked up on uh, rose hips powder. Um, that's a good thing. It's a natural vitamin C, and I just buy capsules and put them in capsules or... Put the powder in smoothies for my family. My link is down below. I, I am an affiliate for Mountain Rose Herbs. So if you go through my link to make your order, I do make a small amount. Um, and every little bit helps since this channel is not monetized at all. Um, but you can get rose hips powder there. All sorts of things to make your tinctures. Um, so anyway, go check that out. The other thing that really helps is fermented garlic. And I know if any of you guys watch Off Girl with Doug and Stacy, they've talked about this stuff as well. This is actually a two-year-old batch, which is so why it's so dark. But this is just raw garlic cloves and honey. Um, one of my first videos here on the channel also shows you how to do this. It's super easy. Um, and this is the strongest antibiotic on the planet. So it's really important to have this on hand. So you can use it against things like strep throat, sinus infections, all those sort of things. Bronchitis, pneumonia. Um, it's really good for all of that. So it's a good thing to keep on hand. But it does take a few weeks for it to sit, just like those tinctures, it takes time. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add the other portion of the cornstarch. Oh my gosh, it is so black. I might just turn the camera around for you guys to see how black it is behind you. 
Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna add this a little bit at a time because it might not need as much cornstarch as I was thinking because some of it has simmered off. So we're just looking for a thicker consistency. Might have just needed that. Maybe like one more tablespoon. So I'm gonna say a third of a cup and two tablespoons of cornstarch. There we go. So just remember, as you're judging your cornstarch, you wanna make sure that you are letting it come back up to a simmer before you judge whether or not you need more. I didn't know that, so I just kept adding cornstarch and then pretty soon you end up with like jello, which nobody wants to eat. So don't do that. Okay, so this is ready to get, get poured over here before it burns down to the pot. You guys can kind of see how thick that is. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my 13 by nine pan. And then we're gonna finish off that topping. If our goats are smart, they are in their shelters. That's what I have to say at this point. <laughs> Holy Toledo. It seems like it should be like a summer storm, the way it looks, you know, like with a tornado in it or two, but we're kind of beyond that now. I think it's only supposed to be a high, like 54 here this weekend. It's, we're supposed to be in fall weather, so. Which I'm not gonna complain about. I absolutely love fall. Oh, that's the other thing. I'm gonna be making some videos because um, I know I promised you guys a while ago those videos of meals in a jar. So I'm gonna be going over some of that. I'm also gonna be kind of going over my plans for postpartum meals. So those videos will be coming out as well. So if you're interested in those, please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those videos. Slide that on over. Okay, so this is ready for the topping, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and give it a stir. You don't have to, but I just like the look of having meat mixed with vegetables instead of the meat on the bottom. <laughs> it's just a preference. Okay. Okay, there we go. All right, now, the last ingredient to our topping is baking powder. So we are going to quickly add it to our sourdough mix and then place that on the top because it really expands fast once that baking soda hits in this recipe. So you wanna make sure you have stuff ready to go. We need four teaspoons of baking powder. That's gonna go into the sourdough that we made earlier, okay? Okay, four teaspoons, wow. Sorry, I keep saying wow. Let me show you guys, let's see. I don't know if you guys can see that storm. It's like a window, can you see it? So dark, that's crazy. Okay, back to cooking. That's why I keep saying wow, it's because that's right behind you. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna mix this up. So this is just your public service announcement tomorrow when the uh, cell phones are going off and the radios and everything else, just make sure that whatever time zone you're in, you are away from your phone and out enjoying nature and, and not worried about that kind of stuff. Okay, so I mix it up and it's already going to start getting foamy. <laughs> Overflow. So this bakes into like a sourdough bread crust on the top of your um, chicken pot pie. And it will bake up. So 
even though I'm filling this like right to the limit, this will not overflow. It'll be like a, like a chunk of bread over the top of your 13 by nine. Okay, so this is gonna go on a 375 degree oven for one hour. The sourdough is going to get like kind of golden brown. And obviously all your vegetables, all your vegetables will be cooked and nice and soft. And that's how you know it's done. Wow, it's so dark outside. I can't get over that. It's just like ominous. All right, is something burning in the pan? I hope not, I hope nothing was. I hope nothing was burning in the pan, Jackie. I must have missed it if it was. <laughs> anyway, it's all into the oven now. So like I said, one hour. And I'm thinking the kids are all outside helping dad round stuff up so it won't blow into the house. So I'm thinking William probably is not coming for milk. So we'll skip that and just pretend like it happened. <laughs> and like I said, next week, no cooking class because I'm going to be at a farmer's market. But keep your eye out for both the... Um, the video that's coming up on Ad, about my Azure Standard haul, which will be next week, and also the video on making homemade uh, Heinz chili sauce and getting it canned. What would I do with the extra topper? I have about probably a cup. So either I would reduce the vegetables by a cup, um, or I would, um, you can put it on top of almost anything. You could do like a breakfast skillet and do um, like breakfast sausage and eggs and then make up your sausage gravy over the top and then dump that on the top. That would be really good. Um, or you could reduce the amounts. Um, so you go down to like two cups of sourdough starter, uh, four eggs, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, four tablespoons of coconut oil, and three teaspoons of baking powder. And that would probably have been a better amount. Like I said, this typically doesn't flow over the sides, but obviously you don't want to like pile it like a, I guess it's like a, um, a pyramid or anything inside your oven. So that's probably what this will go to is a really, really quick breakfast of biscuits and gravy. Wow, it is really moving out there. Anyway, that's probably what this will go to. It's not that much. Like I said, it's probably about a cup, maybe a cup and a half. It's all bubbly, so it's hard to tell what's there. But that's probably what I will use it for is breakfast tomorrow morning because it'll be nice and quick. So anyway, I'm going to let you guys go because this storm is rolling over us and we got lots of lightning. Um, but thank you for jumping on. Hope you guys try this recipe. And I will see you guys in videos next week and then we will follow up the following week with another cooking class. So keep your eyes out for an announcement um, and we'll go from there. All right, you guys have a great night.